Here we are at the entrance to the park, RNL 1968. There are a number of parks around this volcano, and I guess in 1968 it blew its top and uh, changed the topography uh, quite a bit, I would suspect. And so 30 years, 40 years later, things have kind of grown back in, which is a good thing. So I'm in the middle of the parking lot, I've kind of given you a nice little quick little 360 of uh, the entrance to the park. It's it's actually a, uh, the, uh, I think the entrance fee was a little bit cheaper than other parks that we had gone to, so that's always nice. And there are a number of different trails. We, we kind of got messed up a little bit in that we took one of the trails and it was just a loop and about an hour and a half or so, an hour later, we're back at the beginning and we're thinking, scratching our heads, man, was that ever short? And so uh, we backtracked and came back and we found where we had erred and took the other trail, which was far, far more interesting, and it took you more into the interior of the park. And I have to say that I would say that of, of all the different hiking, hiking trails that we had done in Costa Rica, uh, I, I, for some reason, I kind of enjoyed this. I think the, it was varied enough. The trail was very well marked, very, very good condition, easy to walk, uh, not a lot of elevation gain, so uh, it, was, it, it was a comfortable hike, but I think there was enough variety in the vegetation and the landscape that it kept rendering uh, a new interest. For example, you go through uh, volcanic areas where the volcano had blown its rocks all over the place and you can see these huge boulders and so that's pretty cool and then you go into other areas where where it's really gotten back to the tropical uh, ar uh, arena again so uh, again you're just traveling this video is really to kind of give you an idea of well what it would look like and this kind of follows both trails and this is where you got to kind of watch it this sign kind of gives you a, a, a couple options and so if you go to the left uh, there's a trail that takes off to the left it's not as well defined and that is the what I would say is the more preferred hike that's the longer hike which puts you more into the deeper interior of the park Here you can see much more of the vol uh, volcanic rocks. There are nicely marked, yeah, this is a, a kind of a little viewpoint and, and there is a, a lake that was created with that last eruption and that's what you're looking at. Um, what's pretty cool about that lake is you just, you don't see all, of, that's uh, Aranel, Volcano Aranel, which is still an active volcano and I always wondered why they don't open it up so people can kind of hike up to the top and take a look down, but um, I guess even for uh, the local government, uh, they're not willing to take that risk for the possible folks that might run into a problem with it. Now, I, I will say, throughout Costa Rica, um, most places all have these, and, and they call them, instead of exits that we might see, emergency exit, they're, they're clearly marked. There's a lot of them at hotels and places that you would never expect to see them. And you kind of scratch your head and think, boy, are they just being overly cautious? But then you have to remember, this country has volcanoes everywhere. It's still a hotbed. And I think it's got some of the most active volcanoes in uh, Central and South America. So uh, uh, fortunately, we didn't have to utilize the signage. But, but I do think that it's much more active than the way it appears and probably you could just be having a nice little vacation out of nowhere you see this rock flying in the air so I, I have a feeling that the science isn't so precise that they can tell exactly when these volcanoes are going to go so this is the, the first hike which is kind of a short loop it's about an hour it's a nice little hike and um, uh, it puts you at this nice little viewpoint and you can see Aranel uh, in the distant and uh, it's a Pretty cool, looks like Jurassic Park where you would see a dinosaur coming up this particular path. But since 1968, that's what, 40, 49 years, 50 years ago, um, look at that, it's, it's um, nature wins. I mean, it, it, I'm, I'm sure that this whole place is completely devastated and completely wiped out and 
now you have all new growth coming back in. So it's uh, if you leave nature alone, she will learn to, and she knows already, if you will, to heal itself. So again, this is uh, just a nice speeding it up a little bit. Uh, I think that after a certain point, most of these trails can all uh, look the same. And uh, here's me on a thread mill, uh, walking walking along the path. <laughs> Now they do give you, which I give credit to this particular hike, they give you uh, a nice little walking stick that you can keep as a little souvenir, which uh, we all took, and so that, that's something kind of cute that they provided. Uh, my sons were always up ahead. We didn't see a whole lot of wildlife. I mean, occasionally you might see a, a spider monkey or hear a howler, but, but I, I, I think it was very rare that we would see any amount of wildlife on on really on any of these hikes that we took. I think there was a couple in Monteverde where the uh, uh, monkeys were much more conditioned to humans than they would come around, but, but that's in a, another video. So here again, here uh, is, is an interesting change in the vegetation, and um, uh, I think there's still in some areas this trail kind of pops out to a little banana plantation and sugarcane plantation. So it, it does sort of look like it weaves in and out of some uh, or next to some private property. Um, as always, having uh, plenty of water is uh, a very good idea to have on these. Um, I always schlep my art supplies just in case I found something. So this is actually the, um, there's a little hike at the end of it, a little hike that you can take that puts you up, it's called a Marada, a viewpoint if you will. And uh, uh, there, I guess one of the, one of the things that the uh, park sells are guide services and what the guides do, they take you through the park on a guide and then they take you up to that top part and this guide that makes a nice little picnic for you and I'm sure you're paying um, uh, a, a, a fancy little price for it but, but it's, it looked like a sweet little adventure for somebody who uh, looks for that type of being taken care of. So here it is again, we're just following the path. Uh, I, I, I would say that on this particular hike there were more interesting uh, tropical plants that you would see that, that at the trail, again, it's, it's, it's pretty well worked out. I think there's a, yeah, this is a, these uh, leaf cutter ants, and this is the drop, not the droppings, but I guess the waste product from their harvesting. I mean, those leaf cutter ants are some of the, uh, oh, I think they're one of the early species that, that originated on the earth, and they probably have the best political system. Uh, division of different labor for all the workers and uh, they seem to be extremely successful and uh, now this is a really sweet neat little lake um, on the trail that you find it's called a duck pond uh, we didn't see any ducks but but it's it's, uh, it's a nice size and uh, I think that's what I mean about you kind of run into these nice little viewpoints I think I kind of come in here and I show you these leaf cutters I mean, they're all over the country, so it's not so unusual. And some places, they, they've really got highways going everywhere, and it's fascinating to watch the actual uh, uh, guys that are actually cutting the actual leaves. I mean, they, they've got these huge mandibles, and they're chomping off these big old pieces of, of leaf. And you've got all of these workers very meticulously and uh, I don't know if they go around the clock, but boy, uh, they're busy as can be, just carrying these little chunks of leaves. And there they go. Uh, perhaps uh, for our own human survival, we have to develop a similar system uh, where there's no political system and there's just as everybody has a job and everybody does it, nobody, nobody complains, you know, so maybe, maybe that's the right system. We don't know. Uh, we, may not, we may not make it as a species. So. Uh, the only people that do, or the only species left might just be ants. So we're coming near the end of the trail that just continues like this. I think it took maybe a couple hours maybe to do the, the longer trail. Um, and I would clearly say that it was really well worth it. I mean, I think when you're paying that much to go to one of these parks, you really want to sort of 
use the day and say today we are hiking and that's what we're doing and uh, everybody you know has got to be into it and, and if you can sneak in a little picnic and and uh, take a little break someplace and sort of make a, a, an entire event. But this is where I was saying that it got a little bit rough, the trail, but, but it's still it's, it's extremely manageable. Um, I'm only mentioning that for some who might uh, find this portion of the trail to be a little bit more risky or a little bit more arduous. But um, I mean, you know, you're, you're building up a sweat to be sure. Um, and you just have to kind of huff and puff a little bit and stop a little bit more often. But I, 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 there are certain parts where it was a little bit more exposed, was a little bit warmer, and uh, but you know, but that's but that's but that's hiking in the tropics. You know, again, you notice that it's not really deep, heavy, jungle-like environment, and this area really isn't. Uh, maybe because it's only about 50 years uh, of new regrowth, but but that's the park. That should give you a pretty good idea. Thanks for watching.